Good evening everybody and welcome to RSF1 Division 2. This is, um, I believe, round number 9 um, for Portugal tonight. It's me, Aaron SEO, on comms for you tonight. Bit of a different one tonight because um, due to an in-game glitch, we um, don't have the drivers in their team colours. So I'm um, going to take a bit of figuring out to um, see who's on, who's sharing a pit lane with who. But we should understand, I'd say. I've got a rough idea of who's on what team, but it's just a matter of fact of knowing who is sharing a pit lane or pit box with who. Is that just my screen or is that, looks like it's starting to rain a little bit. Seems like it is. Um, Drivers have been asked to stay in the pit lane for um, roughly two minutes just so they can work out who's in what pit box. Looks like they're eager to get on track. Okay, this is going to be interesting to see um, who the first driver is. It's going to be harsh, it looks like. But yeah, the rain's definitely coming down. So we'll see how um, Hush does on this first lap. It's like Dave's retired in the pit lane. Maybe that's due to a qualifying ban. Maybe Verizon as well. But um, Hush will be the first one to get us going. It looks like it's going to be quite... Um, it's going to be just one lap, I think. Um, when it comes to these drivers putting in their first lap of the day. So Hush runs the final long right-hander to um, finish his out lap. I think Hush is meant to be... McLaren, I believe. So running that McLaren, well McLaren-ish livery, um, down the main straight. There's been quite a few incidents on the main straight this week with time penalties for a little bug, but hopefully we don't see too many of them tonight. Hush is heading up towards turn three now. It's going to be quite tricky ending up this hill in the left hander, especially in the wet. Has done it nicely. Head on to the second dose of DRS. Only two DRS zones tonight around Portugal. Heads into the hairpin now. Up the hill. Into the double right-hander. This second right-hander is very tricky to get right. So heads up the hill. Then it's like a roller coaster kind of sector three. It's down and up. So it's down to the left, up and then it's a blind right hander, you've got to really judge your breaking point, hit the inside apex which Hush does do, and up towards final few corners now, kind of want to start staying off the curbs now because the rain is dropping a lot heavier, Hush goes around the final corner now to finish his probably only fast lap, To lay now for the McLaren. It's a 120.2, so it's definitely um, not the time, times that we would have been expecting, but what else can you do? Cornish goes P3 with a 20.4. Now right, we've got, we'll just have to, like, Camel. Camel's in the Williams, he's got um, the special livery on, so that helps us out a little bit. Uh, Camel's the line now. Goes 6 fastest with a 21 flat. Um, we'll see how Zach does, I believe this is meant to be an Alpine. To the line now for Zach. It's going to be enough for only P11. Invades on a lap. I'm trying to see what this black um, dot is and who it is. It's Diamond Dushi. He's currently on an. He just finished a time actually. Sorry, he did a 20.1. Where the hell did that happen? 
I've just missed a bunch of laps, but that's what happens when you just can't tell. Um, Ice Boy is currently on a lap. I think there's people in front of him. There's Grunty, but nah, Ice Boy is the furthest one along in his lap. It's going to be quite tricky for him because um, it's already too wet, I think, so this could be a short end to Q1, I believe. Nice boy coming around the final few corners now. It's good, he's going to be really lucky to um, get through. No, he is through actually, sorry. Without even setting a time, so. He'll be easily through to Q2? Well, if, unless someone goes faster. Which Matty does. Um, goes second. Oh, sorry, sorry, second. He goes 12th fastest with a 22 8. Goes just in front of Ice Boy. Um, but it looks like we're gonna lose, one shot is safe, but it's Dave, Jengus, Logan and Verizon that we're gonna lose. No real signs of the track getting any drier in this first part of qualifying. So it's Diamond Dushy that went fastest, then comes the two McLarens of Hush and Cornish, then we had Breezy, we had Locker and Camel, um, going 5th and 6th. Um, Invade and then Diggles, Zlybrad, Crazy Fish, Zach, Matty, who's currently on a... Out, what? Or is it just an in-lap? It's probably an in-lap actually. Ice Boy, yeah, it's definitely an in-lap for Matty and Ice Boy. Then comes Grunty in one shot. One shot lucky, he's going to be through. Right, let's see if I can um, go through and name all these drivers by their teams if I've got a good memory. So Diamond Dushy is Mercedes and Hush and Cornish, both McLarens. Breezy is Ferrari. Locker is Williams. Camo is Williams, I want to say. And Vade is... McLaren, Diggles is, I'm going to cheat here and look at the livery, Alpine, Zlybrad is Alfa Romeo, Crazy Fish is Aston Martin, Zach I believe is Alpine, Matty is Hash Driver, well, not very much of a Hass that one, oh no that's, maybe that's not actually, no Matty is in a Hass livery. Um, Ace Boy is Alpha Tauri, I want to say. Grunty's Ferrari, one shots. Um, Alpha Tauri. Uh, Dave is Haas, I believe. Jengus Logan, Alpha Romeo, and Verizon's Red Bull. Wait, I only said one Red Bull. Who's the other Red Bull? Or we don't have, or do we not have the other Red Bull? Is it usually Randy Gandhi or is he? No, not Randy Gandhi, sorry. Randy Gandhi races in Division 3 with me. Uh, what's his name? Um, Aldaf. Invade, I'm sure I did say you're Mercedes. Shane is normally Red Bull, but he's not here. Oh, well, and I've definitely butchered that, so, uh, yeah. Don't think we'll get much more action um, in this part of qualifying. Seems like a few drivers just want to go out and um, see how these conditions fare. Maybe they're predicting a wet race. Invade, yeah, you're in McLaren. Yeah, you're in McLaren? Oh, no, wait, I said you're in McLaren. Oh, apologies. Yeah, you're um, Mercedes. Along with Diamond Dushy. Well, 
this is going to be a long night to try and um, keep an eye on these drivers. So I'm so used to saying like, what the Mercedes of Diamond Dushy, the McLaren of Hush. It's going to take me a while, but I, I know um, most of them. Maybe some of them I'm a little bit hesitant on, but we'll make it work. So, Ice Boy and One Shot, both Alpha Tauris. Well, that's not really an Alpha Tauri livery from One Shot. I mean, it's got grey on it. They're grey and blue. Voice crack. Had to be one. <coughs> yeah, um, grey and blue for um, Alpha Tauri. Um, running at number three, so technically, some Alpha Tauri references, but yeah. Ice Boy, that looks like more of an Alpha Tauri, I'd say. With the blue and the um, grey. Wants to get some practice in clearly on the um, intermediate conditions. Um, nah, Horizon, it's all good. I've got the, um, I've got access to the, uh, what's it called? The paddock, so I can, I've got it up here now, so, um, it should help a little bit. Hi Matty, how we doing mate? P12 in that one eh? Loving the um, sort of Haas livery coming from yourself. Matty, I take it you got out pretty late um, since it started to rain. Luckily you're 30 Q2 though. If anyone in the chat is in um, the race, could we have some information on what the conditions are going to be? Like for the rest of qualifying in the race as well. Oh, you invalidate on your first run, that's unfortunate. It's quite an easy track to invalidate around, especially in the first sector. The corner that I struggle the most with on this track has got to be... Um, Actually, we'll see it in a minute as um, one shot comes up to it. It's this corner here. The amount of wheel spin that you get through that corner is unreal. It's going to dry up soon, so uh, possibly maybe a little bit of a wet Q2. And then a dry Q3. And then a dry race. 8 to 10 minutes. Yeah, so we'll probably get it in Q2 then. Some dry running. I'm sure quite a few drivers in here will be a bit, let's see, a bit frustrated at the fact that we've got drivers still out on track. Maybe. But hey, it's all the time they can get, it looks like. One shot's finally pulled out of the pit lane and probably will be retiring. Then we can get on to Q2. So it's Diamond Dushi that went fastest in that session, um, supporting the Alfa Romeo um, overalls in the Mercedes car. Um, he had Hush and Cornish, both McLarens. They got out early and they got the benefit of it, um, finishing P2 and P3 in that first part. Then came Breezy, Locker, Camo, 
Invade in the Mercedes. And then came Diggles, Zybrad, Crazy Fish, Zach Matty, and Ice Boy and Grunty. That was all I could see from there. Then we lost a few drivers due to qualifying bans. Looks like it's dried up in MQ2. I just realised my mic echoes a lot, so you can hear what I mean. Apologies, I'm gonna mute my mic whenever. I eat, but crayon flower to answer your question, I'm having a Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Yeah, I just realised that. I'm so sorry. I don't know. It's like, I never think my mic is actually that loud. It's always when I meet him that for some reason it's like ASMR. Anyway, enough ice cream talk. We've got action on the track, on a dry track. It's Ice Boy Fox currently on his way. Maybe a bit biased here and say that. Ice Boy has got the greatest um, livery on the grid tonight since it is blue and white. As a Scotsman myself, not a bad colour combination. We've got drivers starting laps. I think it was Diamond Dushi. First one to start a lap. Yeah, it was. Move my mic back a little bit from my mouth. That'll probably help, actually. Instead of having it literally in my mouth. It's quite interesting. We've got Diamond Dushi, who's meant to be in a Mercedes rocking Alfa Romeo livery not Alfa Romeo livery Alfa Romeo overalls with a Carlos Sainz helmet interesting with Miami gloves it looks like and the purple sector one Diamond Dushi will come to the line now for the first lap. It's going to be a much better time than we saw before. It's a 17-4. Ace Boy quickly matches that just by around about two hundredths with um, uh, 17-4-5-3. Crazy Fish crossed the line with an 18-4. Actually, I really like Invade's livery. I think that looks sick. Where the um, it's sort of like the Mercedes green. It's more bluish, but it's as close as you'll probably get. It comes to the line now. Only enough for P3. Got Camo coming out of the pit lane. A Camo and Locker both got the McWilliams as They do. That's probably helpful. Um. Who have we got on laps? Oh, telemetry's off. Matty, to the line now, in the Haas. Goes P4 with a 17 6. Zach, currently, I think, starting a lap in sector 1. See if there's anyone closer to finish the lap. We've got Hush, 
in sector three at the moment. Oh, a bit of a correction from Hush and he goes off the track. Hush goes P6 with a 17-7. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention there. Uh, we've got any other drivers on track. Yeah, we've got Zach, as I mentioned. He was on a lap. Oh, it's a very tricky Sector 3, this. It can really um, hamper the rear end of the car, so you won't have as much rear downforce as possible through there. Zach currently sitting P10. As there is currently seven drivers not to set a time yet, he goes next with a 17.9 off for P8. Um, we have got, I believe it's Grunty or is it Camel that's going to be next one to set a lap? It's going to be Camel. Through the final couple of corners now for the Williams driver. To lie now for Camel. What's it going to be for the Williams driver in his first Q1 lap? It's going to be, sorry, Q2 lap. It's going to be a 17 7, 17 8, sorry. Um, enough for PA as Grunty went into the top five with a 17 6. Breezy went P12 with a 22 4, so must have made a mistake on that lap. I believe Cornish will be the next one to start a lap. We'll stay on board with Cornish because he's the only one on a lap at the moment as he heads down towards turn one. It's a very tricky corner to get right because if you take too much care, that's what happens. Take too much inside care, it's going to launch you straight over the track. Um, Cornish finds that out the hard way and um, that's going to cost him another lap with seven and about seven and seven minutes and 20 seconds left. Welcome back, hope you all enjoyed that little intermission, if you guys got an ad break. Jeez, I timed that perfectly, with the delay on the stream. Um, we have one shot who found the gravel, I believe, through Sector 2 on his out lap. Or it might be, yeah, this could be a prep lap, I'd say. Heads down towards Tom Rowley, makes the same mistake as Cornish. No, he doesn't. Manages to keep it on the track. Ice Boy crashed. Where did Ice Boy crash?
Cornish is on his second go of this lap. I don't know, where, where did Ice Boy crash, as you know? In Sector 1. Well, it would be like... Maybe up the left-hander. That's unfortunate anyway, so... He might... Oh, he's still in at the moment, but... You've got to say Cornish is probably going to improve on this lap. What would it be for the McLaren? Goes third fastest with a 17.5. Next one to cross the line will be One Shot, who had a bit of a tricky start to this qualifying session, but has managed to get on the track as Diggles does a 17 1, absolutely smashes Breezy's time out of the park. One Shot only goes 15 fastest with an 18 7. So that Alpine of Diggles obviously got some pace in the bag. I think Crazy Fish is on a lap actually. Heading through Sector 3. Runs a little bit wide through the final few corners, but shouldn't um, cause any major time. It's currently on 18.4, so this has got to be an improvement for Crazy Fish if he wants to get through to Q3. Can't even see how much time they've got left. It's 13, 3 minutes and 43 seconds. Crazy Fish goes third fastest. That's definitely going to get him through into the top 10 shootout. We've seen yellow flags. I think it might have been for one shot again. He's having a bit of trouble out there. As I was about to go on board with them, Zlybrad goes second fastest with a Crazy Fish, not sorry, Crazy Fish. Um, Locker starts his next lap. He's really got to pull this one together because he's sitting P13 with a 17.9. Has to improve by roughly 5 to 6 tenths if he wants any chance of being in Q3. So he'll have to pull it together on this lap. He's got the Max Verstappen Miami helmet on. See if it gives him any sort of pace as he heads up through sector two. Down the hill, then immediately back up for the left hander. Invade has decided that he's done enough. A little bit of danger maybe from Invade, but Zlybrad has um, retired in P2, so it will be through. Locker goes third fastest with a 17-2, so very good time for the Williams driver. Um, that pushes Invade down one more spot closer to elimination as Grunty goes faster with a 17 flat, that's put Invade in quite a bit of danger now actually. Because drivers behind are Hush, Camo, um, Zach, Matty, One Shot, a lot of these drivers are very quick. Yeah, Invade mate, you're in a bit of trouble here actually. Setting P9. Because these drivers are improving, I think. 
Like Zach is currently one second down. Hush is up on his time. Camel's n slightly down. Um, one shot has invalidated. Well, how I think one shot might just make it to the line to have one more go at this. Matty to the line now, currently set in P11. Needs to move up at least one position to make the Q3 cut. He does so, goes P2 with a 17-1. And he goes, and Breezy goes even faster with a 17 flat. Sorry, it's a 17 flat for Grunty and Breezy. That knocks Invade out, so Invade is out of qualifying. Hush doesn't manage to make it, only P12 for the McLaren. His teammate did manage to make it though, sitting in P9 currently. But Camel has improved. Will it be enough though? To lie now for the Williams driver. And he makes it a 7. Uh, P7 with 17 4. It knocks Cornish out. So both McLarens are out in Q2. Kind of like the way that the Red Bulls were out in Singapore in Q2. It came right down to the final lap being set on the board. So in that qualifying, we lost Diamond Dushy, Invade, Hush, Zach, and One Shot. Your top five going into Q3, with Breezy being the fastest, very closely followed by Grunty. Seven milliseconds separating the top two. Then comes Matty. Corner. Wait, Cornish put in another lap? Where did that lap come from, Cornish? I thought Cornish had taken the flag. Sorry. Cornish finished P4. Right, I'll be back in like a minute or two as we get ready for Q3. Um, I've only got nine participants in Q3. Was that due to Ice Boy's DNF? We'll get the telemetry um, back up and running with Cornish, who I somehow managed to miss, putting on a lap for P4 in that last part of qualifying, but he'll be in with a great chance, I think, of either getting pole position or on the front row today. Unfortunately, does not have his teammate alongside him. Hush. I have to say it, Hush isn't the greatest when it comes to qualifying. But when it comes to the race, you can really um, bank in some good points for Team McLaren. Quickly get the standings up, actually, whilst these drivers are on outlaps. So going into this race week, um, Breezy leads Crazy Fish by 25 points. 
Um, Hush sitting P3, 32 points back. Um, then comes Grunty, Jengus Logan, Zlybrad, Matty, Shane Locker and Camel is the top 10 in Division 2. Camel is 95 points back from Breezy, the championship leader. In the Constructors, Ferrari lead um, Red Bull by 66 points. That's a nice thing to say as a Ferrari fan. Um, McLaren 86 points behind, so 20 points between Red Bull and McLaren. And then a further 8 points between McLaren and Alfa Romeo. Then comes Aston Martin, Haas Williams. Um, they're 5 points in front of Mercedes, so that could be quite an interesting battle. Then Alfa Tauri and Alpine only 2 points separate them for P9. Cornish is on his first flying lap of Q3. Heads up the hill onto the DRS straight. Close the DRS, brakes heavy into the left hand. You've really got to hit the apex and set yourself up for the exit. Make sure you get as minimal wheel spin as possible. Speaking of wheel spin, we're going to get to one of the corners that is well known for it. I don't remember the name or the number corner, but I just know it as the pain in the arse corner. Because it is so difficult. It's either you nail it or you absolutely screw it. Corners seem to have done it quite nicely on that lap. Crazy Fish did an 18-1. Wait, no, sorry. It's not even a quick lap. I've overhyped Crazy Fish there. 18-1 um, set for Crazy Fish. That's sort of a banker, I'd say. Um, granted, that's a decent lap. A 17-5 to get us going. In Q3, Breezy did a 17-5. Camel did a 17-4. We're on board with Corners, though, as he heads to the line now for the Mercedes. Hopefully, this makes up for... The Q2 miss it does, and it's a 17-4-0-0 for Cornish. It's closely followed by Diggles, though, who does a 17 flat. Will we get drivers going into the 16s tonight, possibly? Um, one man that I believe that could do it is Diggles. We're on board with um, Locker now, who is heading through the final corner on his first flying lap. To line out for Locker, it's enough for P2 with a 17-3. Has got to find roughly three tenths so if he wants to match Diggles for pole. So I think Matty's going to be the only one next to set a time. He's currently through sector one at the moment. Matty will be coming to the end of sector one in just a moment. Sector two, sorry, in a moment. See how his time fares. It is going to be a 51.9 for the second sector. It seems to be an okay time for Matty at the moment. Only time, only person on the grid right now not to set a time in Q3. This will change in about 10 seconds time as he winds his way through the final corner. Matty crosses the line now, goes second fastest with a 17-2, it's not just a bad, it's not a bad lap, it's a fantastic lap from Matty, he's only got two tens to find to um, get close to Diggles, who's certainly um, showing these drivers how it's done tonight, and the question now lies, can he get into the 16s, and can anyone catch him really? So all these drivers are in the pit lane now, and um, they'll be getting ready for their Q3 laps with around about, I'm just going to check back on the stream, I couldn't see it, um, I can't see the um, times, it's a fifth, 5 minutes and 25 seconds about left in this session, so 
a couple of more minutes in the pit lane and we should be back there on track. Maya comes in to the pit lane after setting up a lap for P2, 17.298. Um, he is the only, yeah, he's the only Haas that has um, participated in qualifying tonight. Drivers without teammates in Q3 consists of Matty, um, I believe Cornish, um, Zlybrad. Crazy fish, I want to say. Aston Martin. Um, I think Diggles is the only um, Alpine in Q3. We've also got the two Williams of Locker and Camel, who have set laps for P3 and P5. So, at the moment, in a decent position. Um, we have... The two Ferraris sitting 6th and 7th at the moment. Um, they'll certainly have time to give. As we have about 3 minutes 30 seconds left. So any minute now we'll hear the engines fire up. And I'm assuming um, fresh soft tyres on these cars. And Crazy Fish has um, gone from under our noses and is on track. Crazy Fish will be the first one to set a final time in this session. I always think of Portugal as um, just Spain 2.0 really. I think of it as Spain with the pain. Because Spain's lost the pain, it's given it to Portugal. I just don't really like the way that this track flows. Anyway, it's not up to me, it's up to these drivers see how they go so crazy fish will start his final lap in q3 he sent 18 one as his first time that was obviously going to be um beaten by the other drivers so he should theoretically um improve on this lap let's head up towards the hairpin Downhill braking, it's always a tricky one. Runs it a little bit wide. Should get away with it though. Up the hill, back down, and then back up. Into the blind right hander. We've got yellow flags in sector 3. I think it's for a slow moving Ferrari, I want to say. Heading on to the left handle now, keeping it as close to the inside curve as you want, riding the outside, and then setting yourself up for this long right handle. For Crazy Fish, and his final run in qualifying has been very fantastic tonight in his times. What's it going to be? It's going to be enough for P2 um, with a 17 1. Very close to beating Diggles, but not on this occasion for Crazy Fish. We've got many drivers on outlaps, we've got drivers on laps, one of which is Slybrad, who's sitting P9 at the moment. Now occupies that P9 position from Crazy Fish. We've got yellow flags, Sector 2 now. I think it's for cars just warming up their tyres and getting ready for their final laps. So Slybrad is currently um, heading downhill. Up towards the blind right hander. I've seen that a lot of drivers are using Max Verstappen helmets tonight. 
Um, he heads downhill. He's four tenths up on this time, so it's shaping up to be a decent lap for his Labrad. Could get him into the top five. We're in the final. Is it two corners? I think these are two different corners. Yeah, it definitely has to be because that's a mini straight. Anyway. Into the final corner now for Zlybrad. What's it going to be in his final time of qualifying? It puts him pole position. He's in the he's in the 16.995s. I did not expect that time. Breezy goes with a 17 flat just ahead of Diggles, who's on a lap at the moment. We'll have to see if he improves. He is improving. He's up by a tenth and three hundredths as Matty goes even faster with a 16.6. These drivers definitely finding a lot more pace now. Um, Locker's not improving on this lap. Cornish is up three tenths but invalidates. So that's not going to be enough to get him um, further up the field. Breezy was the next one. No, it was not Breezy. It was, I believe, Grunty was the next one to cross the line. Put himself in at P2. But we'll have a look at Locker, who is coming around the final corner now. He's a tenth down, um, I believe, through the final sector. For Locker now, doesn't improve, but we have Diggles around the final corner now. We've got Camel actually just in front of him, two tenths up, puts enough for P5. But can Diggles snatch pole position at the last minute? He's got three tenths in the bag, surely you've got to think so. Oh, he doesn't! He doesn't manage to um, sneak pole position, it's enough for P2. I thought that he had that in the bag, he was three tenths up. But just didn't find enough time to beat Matty, who snatches pole position for Haas by over a tenth. So, a very decent recovery from Matty. It's going to be quite difficult for his teammate Dave to claw anything back in the race, but you never know in Division 2. So your grid looks like Matty um, took pole position from Diggles, Grunty, Zlybrad, Breezy, Camo, Crazy Fish, um, RSF on Locker and RSF on Cornish in P8 and P9. Matty's first pole in RSF on so hopefully he can convert that um, to possibly. Maybe, is this, would it be his first win as well? If he um, managed to win the race. I don't want to jinx him or anything, but hopefully he can convert that pole position into a win. As it looks pretty overcast at the moment. Well, even if he has won, um, those you can never get sick of um, getting another win. But it does look a bit overcast at the moment. Oh, he hasn't won. Well, Matty, since you're in the chat, congratulations on that pole position. Um, best of luck for the race. Can anyone tell me if it's going to be a mix of conditions? Because it certainly looks like it at the moment. Going to be an interesting call on strategy. If so, dry throughout. Oh, that's a bit boring, isn't it? Anyway, we'll get through it. At least it's not a 100% race tonight. Although I think a lot of the drivers actually enjoyed the 100% race. Certainly myself, I think it was quite fun. We ended up finishing at around about the same time anyway, since we had short qualifying. But I quite enjoyed it. First 100% race that I'd ever done, so that's a bonus. Got a nice little achievement. Shouldn't be too long from getting going in Portugal. Never did 100% race. Couldn't be bothered sitting at the same track for 44 laps of Belgium. To be honest, it didn't feel that long. Well, not, not obviously it felt long, 
but it didn't feel as long as I expected it to be. Because I kind of got into a rhythm. I felt really quick. Um, I thought I think a few of the other drivers quite agreed. I was rapid when it came to the um, intermediates. Like it was ridiculous. I think I pulled a second and a half on the car behind, who was on the same tyres as well, um, in the wet. But um, anyway, that was in the past. We are currently looking at 18 drivers over 33 laps. Um, gonna tackle the Portuguese circuit. I think we've got a bit of a Problem for Breezy getting off the line towards the back has got going now. Sorry, I think that was actually. Was it? Yeah, it was. Wait, who's that? Um. No, it's Grunty. Um, who had trouble getting off the line at the start. He's found himself a little bit further behind, but hopefully he doesn't have any issues off the start. I've been having um, a clutch issue. Eh. Uh, when I've been going off the start. Um, it's like, I hold in the clutch. As soon as the lights go out, I uh, let go of the clutch. But my car doesn't even move for about half a second. So, um... Yes. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen this week. Of course he's done. My favourite Scotsman. Now I love all the Scotsmen equally. There's your tyres for you. Um, we've got the top three starting on the medium compound. Zlybrad was quite an interesting strategy, actually, on the softs. I found that uh, it is possible to do a soft to medium stint around here. It's going to take some pressure on your tyres, but um, tyre degradation isn't as bad as you'd think around Portugal. It's quite a quick formation lap as well. It's quite a quick lap in general. Um, a lot of fast flowing corners. I don't know, does anyone um, in the chat want to see Portugal return to the real life calendar? I wouldn't mind it. Replace it over Miami, I say. Just get rid of Miami in general. I mean, it offers more overtaking, I'd say. Than like somewhere like Monaco, and you'd think that's obvious, but it's true. As Hush gets disqualified on the formation lap, so we should be getting ready to go as they line up on the grid. Getting ready, we've got three, four, five red lights for the Portuguese Grand Prix in Division Two, and we are foot to the floor in Portugal. And it seems to be a decent start for Matty. Maybe not as good as Diggles, though. He gets him off the line as they head down towards Turn One. The both Ferraris. Um, getting very close together, but oh, it's a bit of contact as um, Matty maybe got a bit of front wing damage to Diggle as he got a bit of um, close together as he headed up in towards turn three. But it's Diggle that leads, he got the jump on Matty, he may not have got the pole position, but he has got the lead at the start of the race, which is probably the dream start for him as there's Cornish going off in the background. Grunty gets through, Cornish has lost two positions, gains one back up on Locker, who's on the hard compound, it must be said. Um, I think Invade got a bit um, caught up in that as well. Finds himself six seconds behind the pack. And P6, P18, Genghis Logan moves up on Hush. Had a bit of a shaky start for Hush. It's a great battle between um, them three. Hush, I think, might have a bit of damage. He does. He doesn't have a um, right end plate. So um, that's unfortunate for Hush. It's going to really hamper his race pace. We could see him in... The pit lane by the end of the first lap. Diamond Dushi um, wasting no time getting moves done on Ice Boy. As they finish the first lap, it's Diggles that leads from Zlybrad. It looks like Matty has um, lost out to the Alfa Romeo driver as well, who's on the soft tyres at the moment. Um, but Diggles seems to be managing the pace very well. Out front, Locker and Diamond Dushi getting in a bit of a battle as they head towards turn three on the second open, the second lap, and you said opening lap. The second of these opening laps, we'll call that. Um, Locker sitting in P8 comfortably on the hard compound at the moment. He'll be going late in to the race, but um, it's quite interesting to see if Zlybrad can get past um, 
Diggles, he really needs to, because he's on the soft compound at the moment. We'll see once DRS gets enabled if um, Zybrad can make any sort of progress. Well, he has made progress, it's no doubt about that, but um, if he can make up a position on Diggles, because he needs to make this move fast and uh, get himself ahead. He's used a lot of um, battery on these opening laps. You can see that from most of the drivers, actually, as he obviously picks up the fastest lap of the race. Can we see a move in towards turn one? He's certainly going to try and go for it, but he has to back out at the last second, or else that could have been both cars off in a nasty incident. Ace Boy finds himself in the pit lane. Jenga Logan and Hush both pitted as well. Hush pitted onto the hard. Jenga Logan onto another set of mediums. So it's not the dream start for Hush or Jenga Logan. Grunty making moves further down on Camo up into P5. As they wrap their way up the right hander. We'll have a quick look at um, positions changed at the moment. Um, we've had Verizon making up eight positions off the start. We've had Diggles making up one. Zlybrad makes up two. Breezy's made up one. Cornish is made up two. Diamond Dushy's made up three. As stated, Verizon 40 with 8. We'll jump above his line, actually, just in case there's a move. One shot has made up another position in the process. Dave's up 4. Um, Zach's up 1. Um, Crazy Fish, unfortunately, losing out a position. Losing out 7 positions, actually. Finds himself down in P14, as we saw Cornish making the move on Camel. We saw the um, end of that battle. Verizon 40 manages to get his way back through on Dave after a bit of an offing from the... Oh, is that us? Dave thinks that's got to be Aston Martin, eh? Um, oh, there was a car off there, I think. It looked like it was um, Zach, I believe, who had a bit of an off in. Or was that Locker? It might have been one of the... It was one of the blue cars, anyway. Um, I think Verizon 40 is meant to be a Red Bull. Anyway, that is... A Red Bull car, I believe. Um, we've got Diggles and Zlybrad. Well, Zlybrad made the move um, on Diggles. That must have been through Sector 2 or Sector 1. But they've managed to um, create themselves a one second gap to Breezy behind, which has put Breezy under a bit of pressure because he's got five tens to Matty, who's under pressure from. Um, Breezy's teammate Grunty, who's gonna maybe have a go at him down towards turn one. We well, could get two for the price of one here. Grunty with a fantastic move. He's gonna get past his teammate as well. They're gonna go side by side the two Ferraris all the way through towards turn three. No team order is being played here between these two drivers, but it's Breezy that um, keeps the podium position from Grunty, but he managed to make the move. Up on Matty, Cornish is going to have a say in this as well. He manages to get past Matty. And Camo manages to get past Matty as well as a virtual safety car. Um, I believe that is for... It's for an off car of... Is that... Where's this off... It's Ice Boy. Wait, is that... Was that Ice Boy that was off? It couldn't have been. Where's... I'm trying to find... Who's that driver that's in the middle of the track, but not on the track? Um. Anyway, gone now. Um, virtual safety car has been deployed though. This is going to help Zlybrad as well. Because um, his tyres were probably going to be starting to overheat. As he had to push like crazy to get ahead of Diggles in these opening laps. Jump my board on with Zybrad as the VSC has ended now. Diggle's making absolutely no um, mistakes there on the safety car restart. Gets back ahead of Zybrad. Grunty and um, 
Breezy continues to have a battle. Hopefully this doesn't end bad for both Ferraris. Could see both Ferraris trying to fight for the final podium spot in this race. They're going to have to be careful though because the last thing they want to do is take each other out. They all file their way on lap 6 through up towards the uphill right hander. Uh, Zlibrad sitting 5 tenths behind Diggles at the moment out in P1. As they wrap their way round the final corner to end lap number six. We'll see if Zlibrad is in any shape to make up a move on Diggles as they head down the main straight. We'll see how the slipstream works out for these drivers. It seems like um, Zlibrad's not up to use any ERS. Um, Diggles certainly got 20% more than Zlibrad at the moment, so he's got a little bit more to work with than the Alfa Romeo, but these two Ferraris are showing some great pace in these opening laps. They've made up quite a few positions to get themselves in a position where they can just start their tyre management phase um, and also hang on to the back of this lead group, which is great because that will allow them to harvest their battery um, and use the DRS to carry themselves along. Further down the pack, I believe we've got um, Diamond Dushy is hanging on to the back of Matty for P7. Um, a little bit further back, we've got Locker. Then Verizon comes in the Red Bull, sitting in P10, occupying that last points position. Then Dave's 2.5 seconds behind that pack. Um, we've got One Shot, who's all over the back of Dave at the moment. Might see a move from One Shot as they head on to the main straight. Round in the final corner now. One shot's all over the back of Dave as they head onto the main straight. Might not even need the full straight to get past Dave who's come into the pit lane off of those softs. So maybe um, tire degradation is a bit of a factor in this race as he is into the pit lane. Is that maybe possibly for damage as well? It does, it does seem like it, yeah. Um, Dave has got front wing damage um, from an incident. As Diggles has a wee bit of a lock up going into the hairpin. So that's going to allow Zybrad to manage um, to stay behind for a little bit longer. 7 tenths gap between Zybrad and Grunty at the moment. This is a great battle um, up at the front. Zybrad goes into the inside, he's going to force Diggles around the long way, he's going to have the inside line as they wrap around into the left-hander. Dave picks up the first penalty of the race, three seconds for him. But Diggles with some fantastic um, defensive work on Zybrad, managing to keep the position. Great strategy from Diggles, trying to make sure that Zybrad wears out those softs as much as possible. He's going to have another go as they head down towards turn one though. Zybrad, is he going to be close enough to make a move? Yes, he is. Has a fantastic slipstream. Has to use the ERS on, Zlib on Diggles. They're going to go side by side through turn one. Diggles goes off. Um, ran out of room a little bit. This brings Grunny into the mix. Um, sorry, not Grunny. Yeah, Grunny and Breezy. They um, both have managed to catch up a little bit. Yellow flags in sector one. It's for one shot who's um, come off at the first to second corner. But it's Zlibrad that managed to get back in front of Diggles into the hairpin. So Zlibrad is back into the lead of the race.
be interesting to see how these two Ferraris work together as they um, try and hunt down um, Diggles and Zlyra. I've got to say that Cornish is hanging on beautifully to the back of this pack as well. As Cornish manages to go side by side with Breezy, makes the move in towards someone who goes off though and he comes back on the track very um, ferociously. And Breezy might have something to say about that, but um, Cornish does keep the position that he gained on Breezy, so it's up to P4, splits the two Ferraris, which is going to be a bit of a concern for them because now they've got a McLaren close, closely um, climbing onto the back of them as well. Diggles still not managing to get past Library again. Two tenths the gap between these two on lap 10. You've got to assume that we're going to maybe see um, a chance in towards turn 1 on lap 11. This is sort of just a game of DRS at the moment. We'll see though as they wrap around the final corner. Um, got a helicopter cam for this one. As they head up the main straight. Here comes Lybrad into the pit lane. So he clearly thinks those tyres are done as he picks up a 5 second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. That is not ideal for his race. Wax on a set of mediums. He clearly thinks that they could get him to the end of the race. Give these guys a little bit of screen time. And we've got Hush um, currently 8 seconds behind the the um, pack. He's on hard tyres, not making up as much time as he maybe would have wanted. Um, one shot who just pitted onto a set of hard tyres after that spin um, at turn 2. But it's now Grunty and Diggles who occupy P1 and P2. Seems like to me that Grunty's got a lot more of an aggressive style of driving compared to Diggles, who's more smooth through the corners. Breezy managed to get past um, Cornish again, but Cornish might have a response down the main straight. He's certainly going to go for it as they head down towards turn one. Cornish manages to get back ahead of the Ferrari back into the uh, podium positions. Well, I think we've got yellow flags. It's for Matty. Matty's um, spun it at the exit of turn three up towards turn four. That is unfortunate for the hash driver as we see Locker and Diamond Dushy go side by side up the hill. Locker's going to come out just ahead. We're going to try and see if we can see Diamond Dushy's on the inside line as he head. Up the hill, Diamond Dish is going to have the inside all the way through this corner, but Locker's going to respond on the outside. It's fantastic racing for P6. Is Diamond Dish going to have a lunge down the inside? It seems like he's just going to stay back for now because he might know that he's going to get the DRS on the next lap, or he might actually be into the pit lane because he's on the softs at the moment. We'll see what Diamond Dushy does on this lap. Does he pit? Does he stay out? My bet is that he's going to come into the pit lane, actually. Because those tyres have got to be done. He's carried on as um, Grunty's made moves up at the front for P1. As Breezy gets past corner, so two, two Ferraris making two positions in total on this lap.
This race is starting to calm down a little bit, it looks like. Uh, six tenths between Breezy and Connors at the moment. Four tenths separates Grunty and Diggles. Got Verizon currently three tenths behind Locker at the moment. This is the battle for P6. We saw a fantastic battle between, um, I believe it was Diamond Dushi and was it? It was Locker, yeah. So uh, Diamond Dushi's lost out a couple of positions since we last went on board with him. So I think that's a sign for him to come into the pit lane and get a set of mediums on, which should go 20 laps. To be fair, 10 laps is quite a lot. 12 laps is quite a lot to go on these tyres. He's going to go for a 13th lap um, before he considers pin. One shot and Dave picked up penalties um, before as Camo made up a move on Verizon, I believe. Or was that... No, it was Cornish making up a move on Breezy back into the podium. Got the yellow flags in sector three. It's for one shot, I believe. Connor starting to make up some ground on the drivers in front. He's got 2.3 seconds to uh, chop down if he wants to get anywhere closer to Diggles and Grunty, who have been battling out for the past eight or so laps. So not probably, yeah, that's probably like five laps since, um, since, oh, who was it? It was Librad, yeah. Since Librad pitted, these two have managed to, um, find their way into a fantastic battle, it must be said, as they head down the main straight to start lap 15. Doesn't seem like Diggles is going to be close enough on this lap. For a second I thought that was the safety car coming out of the pit lane, but it is, um, I think it's one shot's retired car, as Diamond Dushi is losing a bunch of positions, because he's pitted. Don't get your um, hopes up, it's just, oh, maybe you can think of it either way. Maybe there's something going on and the race could have triggered a safety car, but if you're a Diamond Dushi fan, you'll be happy, it's just him pitting. Comes back out into the race in P14 on a set of mediums. That will probably take him towards the end. As um, we have Grunty and Diggles still separated by three tenths. Grunty picks up a three second penalty though. That's not going to help his race. That will um, put a smile on Diggles face. Will Diggles have a go in towards turn one, or will we see drivers starting to pit? It's going to be a couple laps yet, I believe, until we see some action in the pit lane from these medium drivers. Diggles is getting closer, he's getting closer, but um, Grunty, fantastic car placement from the Ferrari driver, managing to keep Diggles behind for another lap. Locker's made up a move, though, for P6 on Verizon. And Slybrad makes up a move on, I've dropped my controller. Oh, that's not going to help. So, Diggle's still on the back of Grunty. Seems like these two just can't leave each other alone at the moment. see on this round of Diggles versus Grunty part 16 and we'll see who comes out on top in towards turn one it seems like Diggles is a little bit too far back at the moment to maybe consider a move but we've seen certainly seen much more um, questionable things in division two this play isn't one of them Diggles is not 
um, close enough to make a move on Grunty, but who else was close enough to make a move was Matty on Verizon um, before the break is all goes skis in the pit lane. Thought I'd was about to have a fantastic line there, um, saying that he managed to make a move, but Verizon comes into the pit lane onto a set of mediums, so went 17 laps on, I believe, a set of hards. That's a bit interesting because a lot of these drivers out in front haven't pitted yet. I think these drivers are going for a soft run um, to the end. They've got to. Diamond Dugy picked up a three second. Diamond Dugy picked up a position. So he's picked up a three second and a position. Not too bad from Diamond Dushy finds himself P12, got invaded 2.5 seconds ahead of him. But we are looking at a 3 tenth, 4 tenth gap between Grunty and Diggles on to lap 18 this will be. Diggles is 1 tenth closer on this lap than his previous as he head towards turn 1. A fantastic slipstream. You could say that this um, move's been coming for a few laps. Diggles moves to the inside as he head towards turn 1. Grunty's not going to give up um, any sort of fight. He's going to slot just behind Diggles. Um, now it's Grunty's turn to um, take over the role of following. I think a lot of these drivers might uh, be worried that they come into the pit lane same time as the person they're sharing our pit box with but um hopefully not oh as um grunty manages to get back through on diggles not too sure what happened there it seemed like a loss of traction for diggles but grunty finds himself back in the lead crucially with a three second penalty though As they wrap the way round the final corner, that we start in lap 19 of this battle between Grunty and Diggles. Got a bit of a different one. Um, Grunty comes into the pit lane. Same with Cornish and Breezy. It's going to be interesting. Are there any of these people sharing a pit box? Oh, this will be interesting. None of them are sharing a pit box. So um, no driver will be affected in this round of pit stops. This releases um, Locker, um, who's on 18 lap old hearts. He's, I, I can't say that Locker's had the uh, strategy call here, because a lot of these medium drivers have um, had their stint on the mediums. But once Locker does pit, he will be in a position where he's um, got much fresher softs than the drivers in front. So if he can keep this pace for now. You'd have to say by the time we get to um, the checkered flag, he might find himself in a much better position than he um, finds himself now. Talking about people in positions at the moment, Cornish finds himself in P8 on a new set of soft tyres. He's going to get overtaken by Breezy on the inside. I don't think Cornish seen that one coming. But he's going to go for a cheeky switchback maybe. As he head up the hill towards the left hand. He has to back out though. He um, probably felt the rear snapping out there a little bit. So sensible driving from Cornish. Backs out and is going to see if he can make a move as they head towards turn one. But Diggles comes into the pit lane. Um, Matty is released into P2. So the front runners have not pitted yet. Um, Zlybrad finds himself back in the lead of the race by quite a bit as well. Um, Zlybrad's had a fantastic stint on um, his softs, but um, as we know, Grunty and Camo are both on fresh tyres, softs as well. So it's really a question of can Zlybrad manage his tyres and also defend like a lion on these last 13 laps 
as I think Zach's had a moment, or he's lost a few positions to Breezy and Diggle's lap 19 for his mediums. Um, so obviously much more grip for the people in front of him. Diamond Dushi and Verizon having a fantastic battle as they navigate their way through Sector 2 at the moment. Runty sets the fastest lap with an 18, I think it was an, what was that time, we'll check on the thing, but Grunty better, anyway, it was an 18.7, it was an 18.4 for Grunty, so 4 tenths, um, 4 to 3 tenths advantage in Grunty's favour, um, so it's going to really come down to the last couple of laps um, for Grunty to try and catch Zybrad. A lot of drivers carrying penalties at the moment. Invade um, goes through on Zach, who has just pitted on to a new set of softs. Diggles is all over the back of Cornish. On this lap. Cornish has no penalties at the moment, so you've got to say he's in a better position as Diggles squeezes his way through on the inside. Cornish is not going to give this place up though. Gets his um, elbows out and keeps the Alpine behind. As Zlybrad has um, pitted again. Zlybrad is serving a five second time penalty in this pit stop, but it's going to bring him we are of contention for this win now but Cornish finds himself up in P2 and um, fantastically with no penalties as well so this could be anyone's game at the moment as Breezy's going to go to the inside on Camo as he head into the left hander who's going to yield here it doesn't seem like either driver wants to but Camel's going to have the inside line as they head through the right hander. So it's going to be Camel that inches ahead, but Breezy and then make contact. Um, Breezy has to take to the runoff. Um, Camel does get ahead, but Breezy manages to get back through. I don't know if that was um, given back to position or not, but um, Breezy makes it back up into P4. We'll check how Diggles and Cornish are getting on in their battle. 5 10 separate them. 8 10 separate Grunty and Cornish at the moment. As they head down the main straight. Got Matty is all over the back of Dave at the moment. We'll check in on this battle actually for P9. Camel made it up on Breezy, heading down in towards turn one. And Matty managed to make it up on Dave, heading down towards turn one as well. So all the position changes seem to be happening down at turn one. Cornish managing to get himself um, within four tenths of Grunty, so he's brought that time down by half in the space of a lap. Cornish is not close enough on this lap to make a move up on Grunty, but um, it seemed like Breezy was um, close enough to get a move on Camo. Um, he's in P4 at the moment.
as Diggles manages to get past Cornish. Uh, Cornish loses that position to Diggles. He's not going to give up without a fight, though. We know Cornish is a man that loves to um, fight a battle, but he's going to have to yield on this one because Diggles just does have the better traction. As Cornish picks up a three-second penalty, that will be um, them back on level playing fields if we can put up penalties now. Uh, three seconds for the top three. Um, Breezy with five seconds. Camel with three. Um, then we have three seconds for Diamond Dushy. Invade. Uh, Dave picks up a six second penalty as well. As Verizon picked up a three seconds. So that puts him on his third. Well, sorry, his three seconds. So top seven all have penalties at the moment. If Locker can manage to. Um, Close in on this pack. He could score himself quite a few points tonight. As Diggles managed to just get past Grunty again. I feel like I'm saying that every other lap. But yeah, there is a um, position change at the front. Between Grunty and Diggles. Cornish managing to um, keep behind them as well. It's a fantastic race so far on lap 25 of 33. We've got eight laps to go um, in this race. Diggles leads from Grunty, Cornish, Breezy, Camo, Verizon 40, Diamond Dushy. Um, drivers without penalties coming locker. You can see he's closing in on Diamond Dushy at the moment. Six lap younger tyres for the Williams driver, so we'll be hoping to make a move in the next lap or so. Um, we've got Grunty still on the back of Diggles, no move in towards turn one on lap 26, but we'll have the um, slipstream as they head down towards the hairpin at the end of sector one going into sector two. Well, we see a move from Granny into the hairpin. No, we don't. Cornish is um, backed out of one second gap, but he's got two seconds behind him to Breezy, so he's in a not too bad position for himself. As Dave puts in the fastest time of the day with a 17 4. These are almost quality laps coming in now for. Um, these drivers putting in the fastest times on new sets. So Diggles from Grunty from Cornish on this lap. Will this be a different order as we head towards turn one? It doesn't seem like it. Grunty's seven tenths behind at the moment. We've usually seen moves when people have been around about four to five tenths behind. That's the um, maximum sort of distance you want to be if you want a chance at making a move into turn one. And that's at the like that's our stretch as well. As Matty has lost a couple of positions to Diamond Dushy and no Locker. Diamond Dushy and Locker are having a um, another battle as they head. Up towards turn four. Verizon 40 is in the pit lane. So it's Locker that um, continues to lead from Diamond Dushy in their battle. Cornish still hanging on to the back of Grunty. Um, Diggles with one lap younger tyres than Grunty and Cornish, so that plays into his favour. Diggles 
Diggles starts lap number 28 out of 33. Three tens gap between um, the top two. Around about a 1.7 second gap separate the top three. As we ride on board with the McLaren at the moment. As they wind their way through sector two. Dave made up a move on Zach for P13. Grunty picks up a three second penalty though. That's going to um, put him on six for the day. So this would put Cornish net P2 if it stayed like this. We head down the main straight corner, six tenths, five tenths now. Excuse me. Five tenths between Cornish and Grunty. It's a level playing field now between these top three. All three, well apart from Grunty actually, six seconds penalty for Grunty, three seconds for Diggles and Cornish at the moment. Five seconds for Breezy, um, three seconds for Camel, that'll be quite interesting towards the end. Can Camel make up one position on Breezy due to penalties? We'll find out at the end of the race. Cornish finds himself five tenths behind Grunty at the moment, so he's in a much better position to possibly make a move on this lap, but loses the rear a little bit. Yeah, Crayonflower, would you believe it? An F2 race without a safety car. Well, that is for now anyway. Um, we've still got three laps to go, four laps actually, including this one, so anything is possible. Diggles continues out in front with um, 7 tenths. Um, Cushion to Grunty has a 3 second time penalty. But as long as he can stay within 3 seconds of Grunty, if he does manage to get past him, then he will pick up P1. Cornish is currently net P2 at the moment because he only has 3 seconds worth of penalties. That would push Grunty down to P... Oh, it would be close between Grunty and Breezy actually. Um, Breezy might just catch Grunty um, out with his penalty. It wouldn't change anything with the amount of points scored for Ferrari, but it would change the amount of points scored for Grunty. I'm not sure why there's no... Um, I've only just noticed there's no game audio on the stream, but sorry about that. Um, don't know if that maybe works. Sometimes it works if you um, go into the menu and then come back out. Doesn't seem like it did, but um, we are about two and a half laps away from the checkered flag. Diggles has driven a perfect race. It's got to be said, really. Didn't manage to get pole position, but got the um, jump off the start. 
um, and has really managed the um, pace of this race from that point. Cornish finds himself seven tenths behind Grunty on this lap. Probably like two tenths um, back from if he wanted to make a move, but I think he knows that as long as he can keep within that three seconds of Grunty, his P2 is secured. Just has to drive it home on this last um, lap and three quarters. the penultimate lap on this race now it's currently th just under three seconds between Breezy and Cornish at this rate Grunty would pick up a podium over his teammate but they come around the final corner and very shortly Diggles will set us off on this final lap of the race. So he opens the ERS for the final time on the start finish straight. He's going to have Grunty very close behind him but not close enough to make a move. Pretty much every car is flashing now. Cornish has got about 10% more battery than these two in front. But um, Diggles has got the track position. And has got the penalties in his favour um, in order to secure the win. As he head up the right hander for the final time, they'll probably be thankful of that one. Well, it seems it doesn't have not bothered them as much. As I maybe thought it would have tonight, but um, we will continue through sector three for the final time with Diggles leading. He's led pretty much most of this race with um, Grunty on the occasion picking up the position as he pitted. Um, but Diggles has had a fantastic race from the get go, missed out on pole position. It didn't matter though. Because as always, points are scored in the race. It's going to be Diggles that takes the win for Alpine. And he wins the Portuguese Grand Prix. It promotes Cornish to P2. Grunty picks up the podium. Five second penalty unserved for Breeze. So it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Verizon thought he was disqualified from the session for going the wrong way. Um, not too sure what happened there. Um, but it's Diggles that wins from Cornish. Grunty. Breezy, Camo, Locker, Matty, Diamond, Dushy, Crazy Fish, and Zlybrad. It seems Zlybrad's going to take the 10th position. See, yes it is. It's um, Zlybrad that claims P10. Yeah, I wasn't sure what happened there, uh, Horizon, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, what a race. I've certainly, it's got to be said that um, Division 2 have become, as Easton has put it, they have matured 100%. They certainly know what driving standards are now. I think um, Division 2 stewards will have um, a bit of an easier week this week. Horizon misses the 100% races. Uh, for my case, as a commentator, um, I don't want 100% races. Nah, but like, as a, as a racer, I wouldn't mind them. As a commentator, it's absolutely hell. Because we'd only be halfway through the race at this point, And I have already run out of things to say. 
Although I ran out of things to say on lap one, and I've just been ranting on for the past 32 laps. But, um, it's... Yeah, that's how it is. Um, so it was... Oh, what's his name? It was Diggles that won the race from Cornish. And um, Breezy managed to claim that podium position for Ferrari. So it was Alpine, McLaren and Ferrari on the podium tonight. Um, so here is the finishing order. If someone wants to get the screenshot of that, they'll be able to go back in the stream and... Um, do with as they wish. There we go. Right, we shall leave the lobby and get these drivers in for a wee interview. Let's see. Uh, so it was... We've got Diggles, uh, and it was Breezy, I believe, who's made a quick dash. No, he hasn't. Wait, has he? Uh, hey, they're on the way. I was in the All right, no bother. Has someone managed to get uh, Breezy an invite? Does he need one? That... Did he finish above Grunt? Yeah. Uh, he finished no. P3, didn't he? No, no, no. No, I don't think P3. so. I think Grunt was P3. Oh, is it Grunty? Yeah. Oh, apologies. Uh, yeah, it's Grunty that we need. Alright. Alright, we've got a full house tonight. Okay, now. <laughs> Join myself, shall I? <laughs> I accidentally invited your teammate. Take it as you wish, but <laughs> uh, I'll just quickly go to the showroom and we'll get on the way with this. Um, right, we will start with uh, our P3 finisher tonight, Grunty. Um, Hi. Hello, hello. Um, so, un unfortunate with the um, penalty towards the end, which allowed Cornish to... Uh, pick up P2 in the end, but you must be happy with P3. Um, had a fantastic race, um, pretty much from the start with Diggles, it seemed like every single lap down that main straight, you guys were changing positions. Um, how do you feel that race went, and um, do you feel like you could have done anything better to maybe um, catch Diggles and be the one um, finishing um, P1 tonight? Um... <sighs> It was not. It was. It wasn't a bad race. Like I wasn't expecting to be up there really at all. I was just happy to be still in the race, pretty much. So, you know, everyone. It's quite a spinny track, so um, I was just happy to be up there. And then obviously the penalty was a bit annoying, um, but end of the day, I'll take P3. Doesn't bother me. Um, it's still a podium. It's still good points uh, for the team as well. P3 and P4 for me and Breezy. So it's. Uh, I don't think McLaren, McLaren only scored with Cornish, so, you know, we're we're doing well um, in the constructors and everything, so, yeah, it was chill. Yeah, it seemed like it, um, it was a bit interesting at the uh, start of first qualifying, since um, it started to rain a little bit. Um, maybe Cornish knew that before, and that was why he was saying, stay in the pit lane for two minutes, so that he could have the track yeah. himself to um, <laughs> get in that lap, but... Anyway, well, to, be fair, um, <laughs> to be fair, I went for the poo, so I would have missed it anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, but very well conducted race from yourself. Uh, for the first time in RSF1, we moved to uh, Las Vegas next week. How do you feel about that one? <laughs> I think the same as everyone else. No idea. No <laughs> idea the track layout properly. There's going to be a million incidents because everyone's going to hit a wall and then Ghosting's probably not going to work properly and then everyone's going to smash into them. Uh, there's going to be loads of incidents because it's really tight. Nobody knows the track properly, so everyone's going to be running wide into each other. Uh, I think overall, it's going to be a bit of a disgusting race, but we'll see. 
well, hopefully, Ethan did say in the chat that you guys have definitely matured since the start of the race, so uh, take of that <laughs> as you wish. Um, but hopefully that continues for the rest of the uh, season, and uh, yeah, congratulations on a P3 tonight. So. Um, we will move on to the uh, McLaren driver of Cornish. How are we, mate? Hello, mate. I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah not too bad, mate. Um, quite enjoyed that race, actually. Um, it's been a while since you've been in one of these parties, hasn't it? <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, I'm just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, uh, I, uh, I have a habit of uh, crashing and getting too many pens and just, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not, yeah, fr- well, not um, very good. You've managed to... Um, secure it tonight um talk me through oh, your no. race and um how you felt because it seemed like you had some really good pace from the uh, start well i bottled my qualifying which uh isn't a great way to start i so my lap in q3 was on used tires and then when i had fresh tires i literally invalidated turn one so what can you do apart from kick yourself so uh my qualifying was bad and then i just kept it sensible through the field whilst other people crashed around me which made it nice and easy and then i somehow ended up in like the top five um, and then it was literally just following each other in DRS, overtaking each other, slipstreaming, just nice and simple. Um, this is a kind of, Brazil's my best track and Portugal's a very similar track. So that's why I had pace. Um, but uh, I just did not have enough pace of Diggles. Um, and uh, so I uh, could not catch that man. But um, yeah, very happy with, with P2 just because of Grunt. I actually don't think I, there was a point where I thought I had pace on Grunt, but. Uh, no, I think he, I think we were pretty even to be honest. So um, yeah, it, it, he was unlucky to get the to get that penalty. To be fair, um, but yeah, take it happy with that. Yeah, it certainly seemed like that. Um, quite a few times it seemed it was very close between you and um, certain drivers in towards turn one. It seemed like you were certainly a man to get your elbows out tonight. Um, I was going to say, um, but you've already really answered it. This is a track that you enjoy, um, considering it's sort of similar to Brazil as you said and um, so that obviously would have helped you tonight uh yeah I did get a bit larry and turn on a couple of times but uh luckily the people I was racing with were in the party so it was all good <laughs> we were able to I was able to let them know I was coming and then yeah I timed a couple a bit too late but you know it all worked out at the end and I don't think it affected them too badly because obviously it just kept us all in a DRS train so yeah it was all good yeah for sure um we head to Las Vegas next week um I'm sure you've got very similar thoughts to Grunty on this one, but may as well ask you anyway, how do you feel about it? I've literally driven it twice in five lappers when the game first came out and I've not touched it since, so I genuinely <laughs> don't have a clue. I'm quite looking forward to it because it's a different track, but I have a feeling it's just going to be carnage, so fingers crossed it's not. Yeah, hopefully not, but um, yeah, congratulations um, on securing P2 tonight, and um, yeah, you should be happy with that, well done. Thank you, mate. Uh, we'll move on to our first place driver. Um, it's the one and only Diggles. How are we? I'm good, my friend. You? Yeah, not too bad myself. Um, it seemed like you were really up there tonight and um, just managed to um, miss out on that pole position to Matty by just about a tenth. I really thought that you had that um, in the bag, but um, it didn't seem to bother you. Um, had the inside line in towards turn one. It was all about that... Um, start off the line which you managed to execute perfectly and then from there it was just like your race to um to conduct um how do you feel that your race went it seemed that um you were saving the ERS quite a bit on the main straight was it due to like set up because it seemed that you had quite a lot of pace compared to the drivers behind yeah I think uh I, I think I could have got pole um but I do think the the pole position was probably decided by setup he had a a setup that didn't really mm-hmm. rely so much on the straights whereas i'd, I'd gone more went to, more towards a setup that was good for overtaking the race on the two uh, obviously drs straights uh, which lent hand to f- fortunately winning and then yeah towards the end i was just trying to keep the ERS for the for the last lap if just in case grunty or uh, cornish could uh, get the foot down down the two straights and then uh, it was pretty comfy until I nearly made it squeaky bum in like the last couple of corners riding on the outside curb but yeah it went well yeah well um you really did have a fantastic race um tonight we move to Las Vegas next week we'll ask you just like we asked the other two how do you feel about that one 
Um, I, I, again, I wouldn't really be able to tell you. I've done it maybe once or twice on five lappers, and yeah, it's a cool race. I, I love the idea of it in real life. Going to Las Vegas, great, fantastic. But uh, as to whether it'll bring good racing, I'm not sure. It's a lot of long straights, a lot of DRS and ERS management uh, will be involved, I think. Come next week, hopefully I'll be a bit more prepared, but right now I've got absolutely no idea. Yeah, well, it's really just... Um gonna be a guessing game I think um till the time we get there but um if you can nail a setup and uh, get yourself as prepared as possible it shouldn't be um too difficult to see yourself fighting back up at the front next week so best of luck for that and um hopefully we will get a chat with you um in the near future again thank you very much my friend and thanks for tonight as always yeah no bother um it was a fantastic race to commentate on um That'll do us for tonight. Um, Division 2 was a great race. Um, we'll be back same time tomorrow for, I believe it's Division 5, um, around Portugal. So tune in for that one. Same time next week for Division 2. Um, on a Tuesday, on a Monday night, it is, um, for Las Vegas. That will certainly be an interesting one. A new track for these drivers to... Um, contend with in our safe one so should be a good one but um that's been me our SEO tonight and um thank you all for watching and congratulations again to our top three finishers and we will catch you all tomorrow night catch you all later